Today marked the 73rd edition of the Copper Agostoni, the first in a series of 12 one-day races here in the autumn, which will culminate with Il Lombardia in a few weeks' time. That was the course that they were having to deal with, 191.9 kilometres. Four laps of that red circuit there, with three climbs on each of them, before a flat to downhill run in towards the finish in Nilsone. There, they would complete two laps of 9.8 kilometres on a flat urban circuit. As you can see, a shark's tooth profile, one to suit the climbers and stronger classics riders in the field, of which we had a few. Perfect temperatures for a bike race in Italy today, just under 20 degrees at the start, rising to the mid-20s as they hit the climbs midway through. Group of five got a maximum time gap of five minutes, but as we joined the action, they'd been caught, and this man was heading up the road, Nikolai Chukaskov of Gazprom Rusvelo. Behind him, though, a group soon caught him, including Pierre Roland of Vital Concept. Also in that group, Alexei Lutchenko, the national champion of Kazakhstan, who had a great season so far this year for Astana. Well, that was the penultimate climb of the final circuit of the day, but it would be on the last climb where we'd see the action really unfold. The group here had come together 33 seconds to the big group behind them. Lutchenko, though, keen to keep the tempo as high as he could. He would be on the attack over the top with the likes of Warren Barguil, but he'd also be on the attack on the descent. This would turn out to be the decisive move of the race. Lutchenko taking advantage of the fact that the other riders were looking at each other. The only man trying to go with him here is Ryabyshenko of UAE Team Emirates. And the two of them eventually would come together at the front and quickly build a decent advantage, despite almost going wrong at this little roundabout. They immediately pressed on afterwards once Lutchenko had managed to get his chain back onto his chain ring. Uh, their advantage by this point over the chasers was 20 seconds, with the bigger group further back at 59. Well, how much strength would they have in their legs was the question, and how motivated would this group behind be? There you can see Giulio Ciccone was a part of this group, the king of the mountains from this year's Giro d'Italia, riding to date for the Italian national team, who won this race last year with Gianni Moscon. As they hit the circuits, that gap was remaining steady. 29 seconds, and it would be slightly more than that as they heard the bell signifying one lap to go. It was starting to look doubtful for the riders behind that they would be contesting the win today. And as it got to 1k to go, we could see that it would be between these two at the finish. Lutchenko by far the more experienced of the two up front. In fact, Rubyshenko has yet to take a pro victory. Lutchenko also very fast at the finish, but Rubyshenko had managed to get him onto the front. It would be a matter of patience before one of them started their sprint. Lutchenko taking a look over his shoulder here. Who would be the first person to make their move? The answer would be Rubyshenko. 175 metres to go, he started to kick, and it was a good one. Lutchenko was just about able to get onto his wheel, but he'd run out of time before the line to come past it. Rubyshenko taking his first ever pro win. Nikolai Chakasov rolled off the front of the group behind to take third on the day, but that's how much it meant to that man. There's confirmation of the top ten. Uh, Rota taking four from Giovanni Visconti in fifth. Warren Barguil continuing his comeback season with sixth place on the day. Well, that's probably going to be the first of many pro wins for this 23-year-old. He only turned professional at the beginning of last season with this very team. We expect to see plenty more of him in the future. Bye for now.